It's a public engagement event trying to bring languages to the general public and show that they're both fun and interesting and not as difficult to learn as people sometimes think. There are museums for all sorts of things, lawn mowers and dog collars, but nothing for languages which are central to who we are as human beings. So we thought we would do something to fill that gap and we gradually decided that it needed to become interactive, family friendly and engaging with lots of games, quizzes, activities for people to come and enjoy languages and to find out that languages can be fun Languages are not thriving well in our schools and universities at the moment. There have been lots of reports giving the, the statistics since 2000, GCSE entries in modern languages have dropped by about 44%. So this is something with which we are very concerned about. On the other hand, the UK is richly multilingual. One in five children starting primary school have a home language other than English. So we want to celebrate those home languages, the languages around us in our community and encourage people to take up new languages and to continue with them. So we thought it'd be good to divide the museum into three zones. The first zone is languages and me, getting people to think about how languages relate to them and their language learning experience. Then there's languages around me and that's languages in the community. Do you see languages when you go out in your local town or village? And then languages in the world. How many languages are spoken in the world? And are some of them in danger of being lost? So a good example of, of something that might appeal on different levels is our ex exhibit on multilingual brains. If you're a young child, you can come in and colour a brain, pick up a brain and feel what, see what it feels like. If you're older, you can learn a bit more about what we now know about the cognitive benefits of learning a language. And one part of the research project has been working with older learners, even up into their 70s, to teach them languages. And we've found that even after one week of intensive language learning, they get some benefits. So we know that whatever age you start learning a language, you can still get benefit. It's never too late. And then this museum is going to tour to Belfast, Edinburgh, Nottingham, and then it's going to end up at a day in the Barbican in London in March. And it can be then a permanent resource that people can borrow and use, and maybe one day become the basis of a permanent museum of languages.